For those of you who don't know me, my name is Mrs Crowther and I'm one of the art teachers here at Bolton School. Now my assembly this morning is all about why art is the most important subject on the curriculum. Now there may be some teachers here who disagree. You may even disagree, but perhaps by the end of this assembly you may feel differently. If you are in year eight or above, you may remember my assembly in lockdown where we looked at a range of different artists. Now one of them was called Bob and Roberta Smith. Yes, one man called Bob and Roberta Smith. He's made some great art. Famously, he's made some art which is signs and they read all schools should be art schools and art makes children powerful. No wonder so many art teachers love this artist. But that's not why I'm talking about him today. For me, he has uttered three words which are far more profound. Three words that I can't forget. Three words that really do describe why art is so important. And those words are, everything is made. Let's just think about that for a moment. Everything is made. I'd like you to look around the room you are in now and try and find something that hasn't been made, that hasn't been made by a human being, that hasn't been made by somebody who put a pencil on a page and started designing something. This scarf I'm wearing, it was made by somebody, it was designed by somebody, and it probably started with somebody picking up a pencil. The, the organ behind me, the ceiling, the building that we're standing in, the desks and chairs that I am surrounded by, absolutely everything. It was designed and it was made by human beings, human beings with ideas and aspirations and creativity. And you sat there in your classroom. Have you ever thought about that shirt you're wearing or the blazer on your back? You might not like them, but somebody designed those. And guess what? It probably started with a pencil. And look at all your classmates' feet. Look at all those different shoes. They were all designed by somebody. And oh yeah, they may have used computer-aided design, who knows? But you can bet their first ideas probably started with a pencil. When you're a baby and you're given a pencil, you don't try and write, you try and draw. To start with, you just make marks on the page for the sheer pleasure of it. And then you try and draw people, usually the people around you that you love. You have to be taught to write. Drawing is an instinct that comes naturally to everybody. And isn't it truly awe-inspiring to contemplate the different civilizations across the globe who have independently and unaware of each other made art in numerous different ways? It really is a symbol of a civilized society. Take for instance the ancient Egyptians and their pyramids, intricate tomb paintings and iconic sculptures or the Parthenon in Athens, built by the ancient Greeks and their famous pottery and sculptures. And there are the amazing frescoes and mosaics created by the Romans. You could look at the beautiful calligraphy and paintings from ancient China, or the stonework from the Mayan civilization. You could look at any civilization or country and they would have a long and interesting history of art making. Making art, be it paintings, sculptures, pottery or buildings, is a fundamental aspect of human culture. Another reason why art is the most important subject on the curriculum is that you can teach any other subject through art.
you don't need history lessons because art can teach you about history. There are so many artworks that capture historical moments. This might be when treaties were signed or new lands were discovered. It might be about wars that were lost or won. The horrors of war and the social impact. It might be art that comments on protests that have changed history or events that have impacted us all, like the pandemic. It could be the crowning of monarchs captured in paint or photography. Whatever historical event you can think of, you can bet that someone has made art about it. Art can teach you everything you need about philosophy. What? Philosophy is a broad and complex field of study that examines fundamental questions about the nature of reality, knowledge, existence, morality and the human experience. It seeks to explore and understand the underlying principles and concepts that shape our understanding of the world and our place in it. Through their work, artists delve into fundamental questions about human existence, perception, emotions and the nature of reality all the time. For example, Kahindi Wiley, an African-American artist, addresses philosophical questions relating to race, power and representation in his portraiture. Wiley's vibrant and monumental paintings often depict contemporary African-American people he's met on the street. He puts them in the same poses as classical European portraiture. By changing what we expect to see, he makes us question what we have accepted as normal in the past. He elevates the African-American man to that of a lord. And why not? His art challenges traditional rank and class in art and society. Go Kahindi Wiley! Another example is Ai Weiwei, a Chinese artist and activist who engages with philosophical questions surrounding human rights, political oppression and freedom of expression. Through various mediums, such as installations, sculptures, and social media activism, Weiwei confronts social and political issues in China and globally. His work often serves as powerful critiques of authoritarianism and censorship. By shining a light on these pressing concerns, Weiwei compels viewers to contemplate the relationship between art, power, and the individual's role in affecting social change. You don't need science lessons. Art can teach you everything you need about science. Oh! You can't talk about science and art without talking about Leonardo da Vinci. Da Vinci's profound appreciation for art and drawing stemmed from his unwavering belief that these disciplines were essential to his scientific endeavors. For him, art served as a means of keen observation, enabling him to meticulously scrutinise the world around him and capture its intricate details. Through drawing, da Vinci honed his observational skills, developed a deep understanding of anatomy and refined his ability to depict form, light and shadow with remarkable accuracy. He recognised that art provided a unique avenue for exploring and comprehending the natural world, allowing him to delve into the complexities of human anatomy, engineering principles and the mechanics of flight. By combining his artistic talents with scientific inquiry, da Vinci was able to push the boundaries of knowledge and create a symbiotic relationship between art and science that fueled his insatiable curiosity and groundbreaking discoveries. We could learn more about science by looking at many other artists too. Artist Clary Rees uses what she finds blooming in petri dishes to inspire her art. She also creates her art using a substance called resin and other dyes and oils as well. The resin is created by mixing two liquid components together to create a solid where a chemical reaction called polymerization takes place. There is so much science to learn from this artist. You could look at the art of Sam Cannon and learn about fossils, or the small porcelain sculptures of Bobby Jaber, a retired chemistry and physics teacher 
who makes spherical sculptures inspired by science and maths. Whatever aspect of science you can think of, you can bet an artist has made art about it. Earlier this year, Mr Britton gave an assembly all about role models. Now the art world boasts a whole host of amazing, influential, unparalleled role models. Take, for instance, Frida Kahlo. She showed remarkable resilience in the face of physical and emotional pain. Despite severe health issues, she created powerful artworks, expressing herself and inspiring others. Frida Kahlo defied societal norms, embracing her individuality and becoming an icon for self-acceptance and empowerment. Or you might be inspired by Kusama, a Japanese artist who has battled mental health problems, but still in inspired thousands of people with her art. Or if you're a feminist, you might be inspired by the Guerrilla Girls, who are an anonymous collective of feminist artists. So I want to leave you with a question and a thought. And my question is, do you want to be a person who shapes the world around you? Everything is made. It might be the clothes you're wearing. It could be the buildings that you want to stand in. It could be the objects around you, the urban environments. It could be the virtual world in so many different ways. And my thought is, if everything can be taught through art, we don't really need the other teachers, do we? All we need to do is employ lots and lots of art teachers. We don't really need Mr. Britton because, you know, we can find our own role models. And we, we don't really need Mrs. Kyle. Can't imagine she's any good with a paintbrush. And just get rid of all the other, art te uh, all the other teachers and employ lots of art teachers. And then we have art lessons all day long. Who's with me? Art lessons all day long. I love this idea. Excellent. I'm just going to nip down the corridor and see what Mrs. Kyle thinks. Early retirement. Okay. Art lessons all day long. Art lessons all day long. Art lessons.